And our next speaker who's going to speak for the motion is Inga de Vard, who is uh, a researcher, PhD uh, researcher at the Open University, and she's researching self-determined learning in MOOC for experienced online learners. Now, what a sly fox you are. Yeah. He's so good at twisting words, and all I will be able to do is just give you two examples of why I think education will become under pressure. There are two main points being the digital divide being increased by big data, and the, no, you can't say, no, only after the intro. Thank you very much. I will be pleased to answer afterwards. And another point will be on the reproduction of the norm, which data seems to do. Now, from a digital divide, or should I say data divide, it's quite dangerous. Because the digital divide trickles down from the big educational institutions just completely down to the vulnerable learners. Mind you, every child. As big companies like Facebook and the other social media giants link up with big universities, there are, of course, little universities not getting that opportunity. The big universities link with the, uh, with the Facebook and the social media giants because they have the money. It costs enormous amounts of money to simply store and filter data. And those big universities will gain on it, of course. I mean, they will be able to support every learner that comes to them. And it will be good, and those learners will be lifted. I totally agree. But what about the small universities? If you don't have the money, you will have no means to give the same quality of learning analytics. So as a learner or as a parent, where do you want your student, your child to go? To the big universities. Now, you might think, wait, you might think, that's not the case. Data is open for all. Let me just point to Victor. He is affiliated with Harvard and Oxford, not a small Austrian university, not a Belgian university, no. So it does matter. There is a divide and it's growing. Now, also from the point of view of algorithms, algorithms, if you are an administrator, you are at a certain point confronted with budget cuts. So you will look at learning analytics and think, what are we to do? If suddenly you, sh you see that the vulnerable group or demographic of students is less successful, it will be easy to think, let's just no longer recruit from the group of learners. And it's an old paradigm. All of a sudden, those with less financial backgrounds, but because who can afford the fees of a big university, is being put in a different place. It's not about equal opportunities anymore, like Victor said. No, it's by division. Now, in 2013, during the World um, Innovation Summit for Education, 84% of the corporate and the governments and the educators said education, education is missing its goal. Young people are not prepared for the future. And I so believe that. I was completely behind that uh, proposal, that suggestion. And the answer would be big data. And I believed it. Yes, we will indeed, because I'm a utopianist. I believe in big data at first. Then a month ago, all of a sudden, a UK report came out. And it said, by 2030, one in every three jobs will disappear. Mind you, not be replaced, disappear. So how can we, even with big data, how can we put all the learners, because looking at the globe, there are more and more people everywhere. How can we push them into those jobs, even if we can say those are the jobs that need to be filled? If we only look at education for professional reasons, for corporate reasons, then we are missing the boat. Then we are dividing our society. 
if we want to change our society for the better, we must use the data for different purposes. We must say, okay, quality of life, uh, joining hands, solidarity, some of those things. And look at the, let's take an example, for example, oh, nice one. Uh, if we look at educational facts and data, because yes, we have been gathering data for, for centuries and at least for decades on education. And we have seen that teachers, facilitators, tutors are or have a positive influence on the learning process. We know that time and time again, multiple researches. Yet at this point in time, education, training uh, is cut. Budgets are cut, jobs are lost. At the same time, however, and glory, glory, hallelujah, big data has gotten much more money, much more funds than ever before. So if it is all that good and that and it will result in a better world, then how can we compare this logic? It's a sort of logic, a little bit twisted. So that's point one. Now let's move to point two. The norm. A human cannot be more than a human. If an algorithm is made, all of us technologists and uh, software developers know the algorithm is going to have the values and the thoughts and the goals of the ones who's making it. So now there is, thanks to data, there is an app which will enable you to, to see whether your newly composed music has hit potential. Well, I don't know about you, and I like pop music, but it doesn't really move me that much. To be honest, the masses do not move me, but the one does enchant me. If I think about Rosa Luxemburg, if I think about Steve Jobs, Mahatma Gandhi, all of those wonderful people, then I know I am at the brink of change. I will see a new world arising because they made a difference. It doesn't matter if I or, or the data of each of my colleagues is replicated 10,000 times. It's not going to change the world because we, we want to, but it's not going to happen. But if you replicate the algorithm of a great man or woman like Mahatma Gandhi, then change will happen for the better. So what is the algorithm? of a great man or woman. It's not big data. It is very, very teeny, weeny, small data, which makes a difference. <laughs> so at this point in time, data is only looking at efficiency. And, but there is more to life than efficiency. Life is quality. Life is also creativity and life at best, or at least for me, is really living the dream. As such, I think data should not only be efficient, but data should be shifted towards a new goal, a new humanity where everybody is included, that we force out the digital divide, that we say the norm is good, but we also have marginality or, or, or the uh, exceptions to the rule, just like we all are an exception to the rule at one point. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Inga. Right.